point on my laptop so I can read comments on here at the same time. And I just hope it doesn't screw up the Wi Fi because we know it sometimes likes to do that. I hope you are doing good. All my highlighters. Anybody else, just keep them in a bucket because there's just so much. Howdy, howdy. Hey, friends. Okay, I think I got it all up. I think we're all here. Ready. Ooh. Is it too late to be drinking coffee? Asking for a friend. In my defense, I tried to drink this earlier today. It was a smoothie I had froze, and it wouldn't unthaw. And so it didn't start unthawing until dinner time. So clearly it was time to drink it, but now I'll probably be up all night. I think I only have one earring in. I do. Okay. Let's put in different earrings. I'll edit all this out for YouTube. Because they won't care nothing about this. If you're on, say hey. Hey, Juliana. I know you hear my girl. Tonight, we're talking about being isolated. And um, what isolation looks like, feels like, and what its purpose might be. Okay. Now we have two earrings on. A necklace. Man. Maybe by five minutes into this, I'll have it together. You know? I mean, Bible study. We're, I've got the Bible study stuff. It's just myself together. Hey, Nikki. Y'all are, you and Juliana are my Bible study ride or dies. And I'm so grateful for that. So grateful. Oh, we are on week three of Maxed Out. And tonight, we will be doing another story about Jesus um, that's relative to the story of the Old Testament that you studied this week in this in the book. But once again, if you don't have the book, you've not been doing it, or you haven't got caught up, that's okay. Um, you could just listen to this and about talking about isolation in the wilderness and be good to go. So that is quite all right. So if you are here, um, I want you to drop um, an emoji to describe how you feel currently. You could be excited. Maybe it's overwhelmed. My favorite overwhelmed emoji is the one that's like this. I think that's her action where it's just like, that's how I feel, you know. <laughs> also do the hide my face. But let me know how you're feeling. Make sure I've got it all together. Oh, I've got Jesus preaching on in the background. Let's exit that. Are y'all enjoying having it also on YouTube, like uploaded later? I know it was a little late with getting um, the last one up, but it's there now. Oh, I love it. This is your me time. It's like girl time, really. That's why maybe we should make kind of like a committee or a club for anybody that wants to do like design merch committee. And we can chat and talk design tornado oh my gosh a storm that Joanna, that's hysterical well I hope it's a good storm not a bad storm well I am gonna go ahead and get started oh gosh as soon as I can get this hair out of my mouth that's what I get for curling my hair five seconds before we jump on here so um, as usual we'll pray Take a minute to get it together and um, be present, you know, be able to sit here and really reflect. So, yay for people jumping on. Hey, friends. Yay. Um, tag a friend if you know they're supposed to be on and they are not on yet. Or to remind them to watch later. If you watch this replay also, you know, always you can comment that too. That you're checking it out later. 
So I am going to pray. If you have a prayer request, drop it below. And if you see someone drop a prayer request below, take a second to acknowledge it, to gather with them in prayer about it. And um, it's a great way for us to build community and relationship with each other. Dear Lord, thank you so much for meeting us tonight. For giving us a word that is a lamp into our feet and a light into our path that is relevant, that is tangible, that is transformative and transcendent in our lives, Lord. Thank you for giving us fellowship and friendship through this tribe that allows us to seek refuge and peace so that we don't feel isolated with our thoughts, with our temptations, or with our fears. Please bless this time that we have together. Please bless the words that we read. May we have the discernment to digest them and interpret them in the way that you intended for us tonight. Lord, bless those that watch this. May you, you give them peace and comfort in each and every one of their situations. Be with the things that are heavy on their heart and weighing on their minds. And I pray, amen. Well, friends, I am glad you are on Bible study tonight. I'm glad that you're here with me. And... I hope that you're not feeling isolated right now. I hope that you're not feeling alone. Um, but let's first talk about what that might look like or what that might feel like. You know, there's different ways and different kinds of isolation. Isolation comes in different forms. And when I first think of isolation, I think of being literally put in a room, door shut by yourself. But there's also the isolated that is where you're around a lot of people, but you're alone in priority, you're alone in way of thinking, or maybe you're alone in faith. And then there's isolation where you've kind of been taken into a new season that makes you feel detached or maybe even disenfranchised from your quote-unquote normal life, right? And so, if you're feeling isolated tonight, or if you've ever felt isolated before, um, I just want you to drop a thumbs up emoji or hit the thumbs up button. But I also want to kind of share with you of a time when, when I felt isolated, and I mentioned a little bit about it in the devotional, but for me, I had never experienced isolation in a very literal sense until I moved out west to Washington State, until I moved after getting married to join Justin and be with him, which, you know, shouldn't be an isolating time, you know, your newlywed time. And though we were together most of the time, well, I don't even know if I can say most because the Army didn't always allow that. Even though we were together for the first time really ever in a relationship since high school, um, I was struggling because I felt isolated from my community, from what I know, from people that talk like me, from people that look like me, and I felt separated from my community, but also my purpose. You know, when you when you become detached, like I had from, you know, my name had changed, I had graduated college, and I was in that transitional phase of figuring out what I was going to do about school. And I just felt alone. And now the interesting thing is, is that when I was alone and, and felt isolated and I started to really go into a, a dark season, it became very clear to me that there was going to be a purpose to it. But it didn't make it no less hard and it certainly didn't make any of the depressive or anxious episodes any easier but for me that isolation was a season of separation and preparation and one of the stories that I found comfort in in the Bible um, along with the story I already mentioned about Jesus being in the Garden of Gethsemane that we did a couple weeks ago is this story here in Matthew 4 1 through 11 and this is the story of Jesus being tempted. Because I had read this one before, probably like you had, but I had missed a cue, a cue, a few key things that 
really maybe look at not only Jesus differently, but the role of the Holy Spirit. So, if you would, turn in your Bible to Matthew 4, and we'll be reading verses 1 through 11. I have mine printed out tonight in the CEB version here where I've got all my notes. If you've been around a while, you're used to my crazy looking notes and seeing the paper like this. Um, but I also always read it and cross-reference other um, versions of the Bible as well. So, we're going to start in verse 1, and we're going to pick this one apart pretty good. So, I hope that's good with you and you're ready for that. So, once again, give me a thumbs up if you're ready. All right. Then the Spirit led Jesus up into the wilderness, so the devil might tempt him. After Jesus had fasted for 40 days and 40 nights, he was starving. The tempter came and said, Since you are God's son, command these stones to become bread. Now we're going to stop here because I don't know if you even caught it or read it the first time. But in the first verse, there's a key, key point to this. The Spirit led Jesus up so that he could be tempted. This is a verse I missed. I missed it altogether. This whole time when I had read for years about Jesus being in the wilderness, I thought that he went there kind of not led by the Spirit, but maybe like just willingly decided to go take a sabbatical. Um, or even maybe misinterpreted and thought that the devil had got him to go there, right? But the, here we're reading that it was the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. And you're like, well, can I, and the Holy Spirit and him is kind of the same thing. Well, actually, I'm glad you asked. So a key point that you want to write down and the context that you want to bring in is that John the Baptist had just baptized Jesus recently. And when Jesus was baptized, when he came up, the heavens opened up and a dove descended down of peace. It was the Spirit descending on him. This is when the heavens opened up and Jesus became the fulfillment of his purpose with his ability to engage and bring forth heaven to earth. This is so important. And so we see this new gift of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit being that discerning factor for Jesus and his ability to know good from evil and discern the difference. Because we said that once he gets that gift, that's when it's tested. So he is tested by the devil, but led there for the Holy Spirit. And I think sometimes we give the devil a lot of credit or we want to blame him for the misfortune in our lives or the hard season that we're in. But here we see that there was already a purpose before the devil even came into the storyline that the Spirit had for Jesus. It said, after Jesus had fasted for 40 days, after I also used to think that Jesus was tempted three times within the span of 40 days, but not. Mm -mm. Jesus was tempted at the end of 40 days. At the beginning of this Bible study, I asked the question, you know, have you recently made the statement that you're end of your rope? Or if you're completely maxed out? Or you don't know which way is up? Can you imagine how you would feel the condition of your mind and your soul, your spirit, after 40 days? I would be some kind of hangry. I would be tempted to probably start licking the rock I was using as a pillow, you know? I mean, I would just be, I, I would be a mess. And that is when the devil comes in. So, you're led by the spirit. He is fasted which also is a spiritual practice, and then he is tempted. Sometimes I think we believe that temptation is in correlation or the causation 
of us getting into a bad situation, right? Like you're at a party and then you were tempted to drink or you're watching, you're surfing on the internet and all of a sudden you were tempted to go to a link you shouldn't click on, right? We, we think that we have put ourselves in a bad situation. Therefore, that is why we're, being, we're going to fall for a temptation. But, but here we see that Jesus is doing exactly what he's supposed to. He's following in obedience. And it is at the end of this obedient journey when he's at his most vulnerable mentally, spiritually, physically, that he, I hear the baby crying and Justin's got him, but that he is tempted. And I think this is crucial because it goes to show that when the most perfect person, the only perfect person to ever walk this earth could be tempted. And it also goes to show that you can be doing all the right things at the right time, doing where you're supposed to be, where you're supposed to do it, and still have the devil riding your back. And that's a hard pill to swallow. So the devil has said, since you are God's son, command those stones to turn to bread. Like, dude, you've been, you hadn't eaten 40 days. Just be like, hey, dad, turn these couple brown pebbles into some biscuits. Verse 4, Jesus replied, it is written, people won't live on bread alone. But by every word spoken by God, Jesus with the cloud back. Five says, after the devil brought him into the holy city and stood him at the highest point of the temple, he said to him, since you're God's son, throw yourself down, for it is written, I will command my angels concerning you. They will take you up in their hands so that they will, won't hit your foot on a stone. He is telling him to jump off this ledge and see what will happen. Now, the devil will try to take you out. The devil will try to convince you to take yourself out of the game. He knows if he can get Jesus to jump and God doesn't react, that he has interfered with the salvation of humanity. He takes him to a high place in the middle of the holy city. You can only imagine this scene that he was probably watching what, what was going on and saying, you can do it. You're God's son. He'll do it. He'll, he'll save you. He's quoting scripture here. The devil is. And that's one of the hard things for us to kind of grasp is that even the devil knows God's word and knows how to use it. But Jesus, of course, replied and said, again, it is written, don't test the Lord your God. He knew better. So that's number one and number two times being tempted. Verse eight, the devil brought him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and all of their glory. And he said, I'll give you these things if you worship me. Jesus responded, go away, Satan. Because it is written, you will worship the Lord your God and serve only him. The devil left him and the angels came and took care of him. Now, one of the things I want you to notice is that there's three major temptations. But not only are there three temptations, but they escalate each time. Right? We go from being tempted with food to being tempted with safety to being tempted with power and authority. His flesh is being tempted. The divinity in him is having to override those fleshly, nuanced urges, especially as weak as he is. Think about the decisions that you have made when you were tired or hungry. They're not the decisions that you make when you're of sound mind and body. Your dopamine levels are low. Your energy is low. And your mind is probably hallucinating. I can't imagine how hard it was to not just be like, God, can you just please turn this rock into a biscuit so he will go away. 
I can't imagine the pull to want to do that. To want to leave in and not fall for the temptation, but just to say, Lord, can you please handle them now? But not only do the temptations escalate, but the devil makes it sweeter and it goes higher. Right? Literally an elevation. You go from looking at the rocks around you to turn them into stone to looking at the city that you're in to then over a mountaintop. The deal could get sweeter and sweeter and better and better, but yet the answer is still no. And I think it is crucial to understand that these are things that Jesus in his flesh had to work through. But because he is the word and the word is him, John 1, 1, God made flesh of the word, then he knew the word itself. So as the devil tried to speak it to him and rebuttal his his temptations, Jesus knew the truth as he was the truth. And to think about now knowing that Jesus was led there by the Spirit, we're also kind of conflicted in knowing that God knew this was happening the whole time. Jesus knew that he was led there by the Spirit, and so surely his dad knew where he was at. Why wasn't he coming to rescue him? I mentioned earlier about my hard season, about the wilderness season that I was in, and I refer to a lot of time as the valley. And one of the things that I felt so clearly about and that, that I felt revealed to me by God was that He will make you repeat a season, a repeat a temptation, or to repeat a situation over and over again, and you will not be released from it until you have learned the lesson that you need to learn. Until you have passed the test. Because the, the devil offered Jesus literal elevation. The elevation we seek as Christians in discernment and sanctification is a spiritual elevation. Getting closer and higher to a perspective where we can see and understand God a little better. And so when... I think about the season in my life, I know for a fact there were temptations that were small um, and things that were not bad, just earthly and fleshly, where it was easier to give in than to learn the lesson. But I needed to pass the test so that I could receive the elevation change from God. The elevation change which then would create the spiritual change and the state change of my being existence the breaking of the chain because you see it is immediate when Jesus says go away Satan the devil left and angels came to take care of him it wasn't on day five the devil first came. It wasn't on day seven. It wasn't on day ten. But day forty. Forty days. Rock bottom. The weakest of the weak. The most wore out of the wore out. And the devil tried to come hard. Then harder. Then hardest. But the most important thing was that Jesus stayed the course. He didn't try to take an exit plan that wasn't out of God's plan. He wasn't looking for a way out. He didn't try to run from it. But he faced it head on, rebuked it, and beat the test. And so Jesus knows not only what it's like to be isolated and to feel alone, and to feel tempted. 
but he also has been put to the test before he could fulfill his purpose. Jesus' ministry would start after this wilderness journey. And there's so many times in the Bible where we see people who have to go through testing after testing. And like I'm immediately reminded of David who has to fight two animals in his backyard while he is shepherding sheep before he had to fight Goliath, before he had to fulfill a purpose. You're going to be tested. There's going to be small things and there's going to be big things. And isolation is a place that you can be worn down and wore out. And it's the easiest to fall for it. And so three kind of things I want you to keep in mind here specifically is that the devil will meet you at rock bottom. So if you're at rock bottom, then the devil's got you right where he wants you. And so just as Jesus is a hope and an anchor, you want to jump on that anchor and start climbing your way up. I hope you have the Bible study because there's the story of Shadrach, Meshach, and Amendigo. And you see where Jesus meets them in their literal fiery pit. There was supposed to be three men, but then there was four. And you see how things escalate over and over for them to get hotter and fierier and more tempting to just you know, probably call it quits and just be like, yeah, we'll just tap out and die on this one, right? The devil will be there, but Jesus can be there too. Number two, if the devil can't take you out or get you to take yourself out, which we saw in verse six, then he'll try to wear you out. Jesus will try to, or the devil will try to exhaust you. He tried to take Jesus even further on a mountaintop and say what about now what if I give you this he will wear you down and wear you out worse than a toddler at two o'clock in the morning it's his job it's what he does and so if you're feeling the pressure of being worn down and wore out and further that's part of the plan but there is a breaking of bondage and chain that comes with passing the test. And I also want you to keep in mind that the devil knows scripture. He may even know it better than you right now. And so that's why as Jesus had the companion of the Holy Spirit and you have the companion of the Holy Spirit, it's also okay to seek companionship and discipleship through mentors and people that you can talk to and ask when you're tempted or going through a really hard season. I can't even name all the people that I had to lean on in my wilderness and in my valley. I would have never made it without them. Last week we talked about the importance of having three crazy friends. Of having the right people around you at the right time. Because you never know when you're going to need to call on them. But ultimately, I want you to keep in mind that sometimes your separation isn't a causation of sin that you've already fell into or fell out of. That sometimes your separation is for a purpose. For you to be strengthened in faith and for you to draw closer to God. Your separation might have been a part of the Spirit's plan. And your testing in this season could be the missing piece in the breakthrough that you've been praying for. You've heard me say it probably before if you've been here any amount of time, but we want to make sure that we are ready to receive the gift that we are asking for, that we're strong enough. You know, we don't give children gifts that they aren't ready to use or hold or could hurt them or it's too heavy, even if they're good gifts, even if they're nice gifts. Because they're just not ready for it yet. It's just not a sensible gift, right? So we have to remember that if we're asking God to strengthen us, to take us to a new level with work or influence 
or in faith that new levels require new strengths and we only get stronger by maxing out where we're at you have to max out you have to test that strength and your strength will be tested but once you max out and beat the test your faith not only will be stronger but your purpose will be solidified and that's what happened with Jesus I love the visual of the angels rushing to Jesus like they were waiting in my head I kind of think of it as you know they were waiting in the wings like come on like cheer me like Jesus come on just say no just say no tell them go back to where you came from like burn Satan say something like that and then we'll be right there kind of like cheerleaders you know like in the corners hollering behind the veil just waiting for just to say go away Satan and then they would rush in you know think of the boxing matches that I've watched on TV or MMA whatever just watches and where the bell ring or they'll have a timeout whatever they call it and the and the boxer or fighter goes to the corner and they all rush in to like dab his nose and give him food and you know whatever he needs and I just kind of think of the angels that way like ready to receive Jesus like yeah man now you killed it but how exhausted he probably felt but in isolation and in temptation and fighting it it may make you feel weary or extra worn out but to like a good workout the next day your soreness may be proof not only that you survived but of the strength that is growing what you can endure is becoming a strength that you'll be able to rely on in the future and so isolation and separation can be scary and can be hard but it can be fruitful it can be a season of drawing you closer and stronger to God it can reveal to you maybe weaknesses or areas in your life that you need help in and that's okay too that was the truth for me I needed help But the best thing that you can do is realize that the discernment that comes with the Holy Spirit is not something we can live without. It's something that we're going to need for the rest of our lives. And in separation, there's no better time than for us to tune our ears and to learn the voice of God. To discern that voice. So that we too can know when to say go away Satan because his voice is also sweet his voice will call out our name and say the right things at the right time when we're the most vulnerable when we're at rock bottom and we've got to know the difference between who is with us in the fiery pit versus who is there to try to make us jump off of a cliff and if you've been in a pit like I have and stood close to an edge, you, you know the fear that can come in that season. The voices that you hear, sometimes physical, sometimes literal. But that's why now when you're in a season and you're able to put in the work to learn and to discern and to tune, there's no better time to do it. So I hope you use this study each week. To learn and be affirmed that Jesus is no stranger to our pain to our to our feelings that he also experienced the weariness of this world that Jesus also struggled and wondered what am, what am I going to do but because he was the word made flesh he knew how to respond so it's our job to know him, to know his word, so that we too can beat our test. And then be rescued by angels, to be released from our bondage. So tonight I want to pray for whatever is on your heart. Whatever 
is making you feel isolated, ashamed, whatever is carrying a deep burden on your heart that you feel isolated in because you can't talk about it or separated. And I just want to pray for that and pray for your discernment so that you can release it and let go. This week for the challenge, I want you to sit. I know, once again, if you're a woman, you're like, can I, how can I really sit still this long? But I'm not going to tell you to sit and do nothing for 40 days. But for 40 minutes, to sit in silence and in stillness and no distractions. Maybe that means get up early or stay up late. But to sit there for 40 minutes and just listen and pray and write down what you hear. And then measure that against what we know of Jesus and of God's character. And you can start fine-tuning your own discernment and voice of God. So just do it once. Let it be your challenge. Let it be your fine-tuning for this week. But you've got to get into practice of listening and hearing. Because there's so much noise in this world and we have notifications, bings and pings all day long. Or maybe you're a mom and you hear mom all day long too. Or maybe you have the bands of work. Sometimes we may need to isolate ourselves so that we can hear from the Spirit. So, I'm going to pray. I challenge you to do that. If you take the challenge, give us a thumbs up. Let us know you're going to try it. Let us know how it goes. Try, even if you don't make it all 40, any amount of time spent with the Lord is never wasted, I promise. So, I'm going to pray. Lord, thank you so much. For being our companion. Thank you for giving us the word as an example that though Jesus was perfect and holy, he was also human. Lord, as our flesh may feel weak and our spirits grow weary, we ask that you give us strength to face our temptations and for us to rebuke the devil. Lord, I ask that you be with those who are heavy burdened tonight, those who feel isolated and ashamed. Comfort them. Meet them in the fire as you did with Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. Join them, even if they are not asking yet, Lord, just join them wherever they are. Lord, join them in their fire so that as the devil tries to meet them at rock bottom, they're not standing alone. Lord, thank you for the blessing of friendship and fellowship in this group. Thank you for the friends. Thank you for the family of Christ. Lord, thank you so much for the blessings you've bestowed upon each of us. In your name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you for joining tonight. Thank you for joining Bible study. I hope you are enjoying this. Um, I know it's a little different with some homework, but I just feel so called to not just teaching you Bible studies, but hopefully discipling you into a deeper relationship with God where, you know, a cookie cutter, shallow water faith is not quite enough because I've been at rock bottom and I've felt rock bottom even recently and I feel for people who don't feel like they have the tools or the capacity to work their way out and so I'm grateful for each of you Alexis I'm so glad you made it on Juliana and Nikki who's been here all night I'm just so appreciative each, of each one of you and the work that you're doing to grow in your faith and an understanding of the word. So, thank you so much for joining me. I'm going to hop off here um, and see if I can get it on to YouTube and 
get the rest of our things that'll up. Oh, Jelena, add thermocol. Night, ladies. You're so sweet. Appreciate y'all. Have a good week. Bye, friends.